Newlywed fever continued to rise in the swamp, and dear Fiona couldn't be happier. Her parents invited her and Shrek to far, far away so they could meet the handsome man she married. While packing for their long journey, Shrek realized he still needed some essentials for the trip. Look, I don't want to be late. Then I need help collecting eyeballs. It'll be a long journey, and nobody wants to see me hungry. Why don't we just get some parfaits? You know, ones with whipped cream? Oh, I love whipped cream. Ogres eat nature, not parfaits. Grandma, it's me. I got the chickens for the soup. And I had help from my four new friends. Splendid. Now, if your friends will fetch me some blackbirds, I'll make them the best blackbird pie they ever tasted. Shrek's starving for some great pie, and an old shut-in wants to make it for him. But who will be able to bring home the blackbird? Fiona doll, it's your hero time! Well, it's been fun, guys, but I have a blind date. She might be my sugar cookie. That room in the carriage? I've got a game to pitch in far, far away. And so, they came upon a dark, creepy forest. And as if that weren't reason enough to turn back, an evil witch flew above them. Seeing the carriage horses were enchanted, the wicked witch turned them back into mice, for witches need mice for their witchery. The wicked witch then left a trail of cheese, so the mice would be led to her doorstep and into her boiling pot, because she is really wicked. I could tell you some stories. We have been rudely turned back into mice. Yes, I can see that. No, you can't. By Jove, that smells like cheese. Great. Now we need another potion to turn them back. We'll never make it there. Relax. The Wicked Witch's place is that way. Excuse me. Wicked Witches, Spooky Trees, Crazy Mice on a Lactose Binge, we are doomed! Shut it, Donkey. Now, how's this gate open? Ooh, to stir the Christ. Sorry. I can tell you put down roots here before. But if you could scooch to the side. West. Donkey! All oh, right! My burrow blast! To fall in. Castle, but you can't stay here. Your party ain't welcome round here. And what are you gonna do about it, Tin Man? Up, get up here. Dragon and I flew in here. My fire breathing beauty. <laughs> the mice will be mine. Don't worry, we'll save Fiona. So a nervous Shrek waited to meet Fiona's parents, King Harold and Queen Lillian. Hoping to impress them, Shrek even remembered to trim his nose hairs. After that minor stumble, the King and Queen got along famously with Shrek, welcoming him with the tolerance, love, and affection usually reserved for pop stars and heads of state, or not. King Harold made it clear he wanted Fiona to marry Prince Charming and wasn't so fond of his fat, disgusting, nose-picking son-in-law. 
Shrek made it clear he loved Fiona and no pompous king was going to blatantly mock his ogre girth. Fiona and Queen Lillian were eventually able to break up the fight. The king was approached by Fairy Godmother, who was a powerful provider of happily ever afters, and a lot of people owed her favors. She makes offers you can't refuse and can make people disappear, literally. You understand where I'm going with this, right? Because she could leave me sleeping with the fishes if I said too much, and mirrors and fish don't mix. <laughs> Trust me. In the morning, tempers appeared to have cooled, and King Harold offered to show our group around far, far away. Welcome to Far, Far Away! Fabulous shopping, great view, beautiful people! Why don't you make yourselves useful and be my deputies? Deputy Shrek, at your service. Where you see this symbol, I need your help. Congratulations, Shrek. You're quite resilient. Fiona, why don't you show the others back to the castle? Curses! Plan B, then! Save the poison apple and hire the overkiller! After a long day of saving fried chicken, stopping an inner city ride, and helping a wannabe princess get her shopping done, our hero headed back to the king's castle for a good night's sleep. Poor Shrek's evening would take a turn for the worse as he stumbled across Fiona's childhood diary. A devastated Shrek spent the night reading about Princess Fiona's dream of marrying a handsome prince with washboard abs, a chiseled chin, impeccable hygiene, in short, the anti-Shrek. Tired of being green and feeling ugly, Shrek decided to take a walk in the woods as his friends tried to cheer him up. Now, people, ready for messy friends. Puss in boots. One life down, eight to go. Well, you've been a bad little kitty. Please, do not terminate me. I can take you to the Grand Fairy Magic. She is the answer to all your problems. And so, Hoping to solve Shrek's problems, our gang moved forward to Fairy Godmother's house, which was known for two things, its pre-war colonial charm and the impossibility of getting inside without an appointment. The only appointments today are Ms. Hood and a package from Jack and Jill's farm. Oh, I have an idea. We can intercept that package from the farm. Better yet, we can go to the farm and get the package. Yeah! Focus, focus. Pumpkins, focus. Come to life. Cause some strife. Uh, Shrek, do these pumpkins look a little funny to you? Donkey, they're just pumpkins. <laughs> Looks like the elevator's stuck. An act of death-defying danger? Wet, narrow ledges that could lead to a horribly gruesome death? This sounds like a job for a true swashbuckling hero. Puss in Boots, come on down! You're the next contestant on Hero Time! And so, our heroes found themselves overlooking miles of rolling farmland, for it seems the water Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch had magical properties. Despite Jack's broken crown and a possible skull fracture, he and Jill realized organic farming could make them a lot of gold. And they were right, because really, who doesn't like a nice, juicy, all-natural salad the size of a dragon? A really fat dragon. I mean, seriously, look at those carrots. That's a big salad. Hey, you are Jack and Jill? No, we are taking care of this place as Jack and Jill are on vacation. Yeah, but we are not so good. We are lazy and pig out all day. Can you help us with some chores? Only if one of those chores includes delivering the package to Fairy Godmother's house. 
You've got a deal. Just walk around the farm and look for one of us to get another chore. Thank you for fixing the farm. Jack would have made chops out of us if you didn't help. Yeah. Now take this delivery to Fair Godmother. You know what, guys? I think I'm going to stay behind and get some flour. It is. And so, Shrek finally got a chance to ask the Fairy Godmother for a happily ever after potion. But he didn't just ask her. He showed her why he deserved one. He showed her everything from gadgets to gadgets, a graph, a pie chart, and a pie to go with it. He showed her numbers, statistics, blind jabbits, and widgets. He even showed her a couple of midgets. But the Fairy Godmother told him ogres aren't allowed to have happily ever afters. And so, her answer was... No! And now, Ogre, you must go. Hey guys, I got my potion! Well, apparently Ogres don't get happily ever afters. We should just go in there and take it. I know where the potions are. Follow me! You! Run! I'll hold her off! The Fairy Godmother is one angry pixie and only Lil Red and her basket of apples can clip her wings. I think we all know what that means. Yep, it's hero time! I'm Lil Red, not Black and Good Blue. Good job, but she'll be back, you know. And usually the coming back is followed by the evil spell casting, which is only fun if you want to spend the rest of your life a toilet brush. You might want to get back and help Shrek. Wonderful. You're all back together. Now I can turn you all into rancid rump roast. I will defend us from this evil witch. Kitty, she'll take five of your lives. Let's get out of here. Okay, we are safe here. It does sense us, these things. Yeah, you couldn't sense a bowl of milk if you were sitting in it. <laughs> I will chop you into oh, such get you, Shrek. Ha ha ha! Let's get out of here and make sure the potion works. No one knew what the potion would do. After Donkey did a taste test, Shrek chugged the potion, hoping it contained a happily ever after for him and Fiona. Nothing happened, at least at first. But then... In the middle of the rainy night, something unexpected happened. Shrek and Donkey underwent a massive transformation. Shrek was as handsome as a prince, and Donkey his noble steed. Things seemed to be going great as the gang said thanks and goodbye to Lil Red for now. But, after Shrek drank her potion, Fairy Godmother knew her son, Prince Charming, had a handsome rival for Fiona's affection. So she made sure he was locked away in the deepest, darkest dungeon of a faraway prison where no escape was possible. What Fairy Godmother didn't count on was Shrek's friends finding out about his arrest through a concerned and extremely benevolent third party. So a jailbreak was planned, one that would most certainly test the fellowship of this thing. All right, listen up! No. The but they're blind. Pardon you. Oh, here they are, just hanging around. Come on, Wolf, no time to spare. We gotta get back to Far Far Away before the fat lady sings. How are we gonna get them out of there? Dressed for bed, but ready for action, Big Bad Wolf! What? 
I know, I know, it's hero time. Uh, uh, yes, well, Wolf, your hero time is full of fabulous prizes and the key to free your pal. But in order to free your pals, you must survive the staircase of doom. Get ready for hero time. The only thing now standing between Shrek and Far, Far Away was Mount Grimm, known amongst mountaineers as the heaping ginormous mound of rubble o death. Big Bad Wolf, claiming to have been a Big Bad Sherpa in his puppyhood, knew a shortcut. <laughs> Why go over a mountain when you can go through it? And remember, if Shrek and the bunch don't move fast, Prince Charming will kiss our unsuspecting Fiona, and Shrek will lose Fiona forever. Our special charge will get us through. Rashna is all sickness. She's alive. Yeah, not so fast. Fiona will marry Prince Charming, and you can all take a dirt nap. You may have stopped me this time, but I'll get you. Don't you. Now on to far, far away, and my fair, fair Fiona. Handsome and the crew made their way to far, far away. They arrived to find Gingerbread Man brought a little friend. Well, okay, a big friend. Unbeknownst to the crew, Gingerbread Man had whipped up a monstrous cookie creation to help defeat Fairy Godmother. Unfortunately, his weapon of mass destruction turned out to be a mass of doughy devastation. Help! Knights are attacking a giant cookie but destroying the city! Only you can put out the fire. We'll take care of this. Great. I'm going on a porridge, but meet me at the crux when you're done. Well, things were about to get ugly. If Shrek and Fiona didn't kiss before midnight, they would be transformed back into ogre form. But what do you know? Those crazy kids decided to go for the ugly. Love can make you do some pretty strange things. <laughs> if you don't like awkward kissing scenes, then turn your head. <laughs> Now that's more like it. You're beautiful. And you are truly handsome, Shrek. Oh no! Why? 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 Um, I think my carriage is double parked. You're not going anywhere, you incompetent little toad. Grab it! Hey, Toot! my father like that? I will never marry your son. Looks like we got our happily ever after without your help. Guess you underestimated us. The only things I underestimated were trolls and elves. If you want something evil and right, you have to do what your evil son. How about this for your happily ever after? What's the matter? Not a troll fan. To the curve, or to the tree, whatever. That's it. I'm sending you straight to the glue factory. What do you know? I can be beaten. Oh, you 
whole box of tissue. <sighs> no first thing to worry or go wrong. Well, Shrek and Fiona got their happily ever after, after all. Now put down the controller and go outside to play. We're done. Really, it's over. That is all, uh, folks. <laughs>